Captain Marvel, also known as Shazam, is the subject of today's video. I would like to show you some of the figures I have regarding Shazam and Shazam family uh, that were all made by DC Direct, uh, also known as DC Collectibles, that just recently um, pretty much ceased to exist due to Warner Brothers closing that department down. So uh, let's start with this figure of him. Uh, this particular Shazam uh, belongs to a particular wave of Shazam figures that were released by DC Direct a couple of years back, around about 10-15 years ago. And each of these figures in that single wave would come with one of these. A very nice looking uh, plastic stand that has the yellow lightning on the red background which is the insignia of Shazam himself. And the figures were actually pretty well done. The articulation was not up to par with, let's say, Marvel Legends, but that wasn't really the point. I think the main focus was on the sculpt. Now, Shazam's alter ego, as some of you know, is uh, an orphan called Billy Batson, who was according to the old vintage comics, separated from his twin sister. So that was the, or, the original origin story. Around 1967, um, Shazam comics, uh, or actually as he was known Captain Marvel in those days, lose the right to use the name Captain Marvel, and Marvel Comics actually ends up appropriating that name. And roughly from that time onwards, Instead of being called Captain Marvel, she, he was given the name Shazam in order to avoid any legal issues. Shazam comics were originally published by the Fawcett comics until eventually, by about uh, 2011, roughly, uh, the uh, DC Comics managed to completely obtain the rights to the character and all the characters related to him. He has a long, li um, his first issue of Shazam came out in uh, 1940, and ever since there have been numerous publications of his adventures with the original members of the Shazam family, and uh, there were some issues with DC Comics at that time, and we're talking about the period of about after World War II, so late 1940s, and then during the 50s, due to the fact that DC was having an idea that Shazam was just a bad copy of Superman. So there were some legal issues there. But in the end, things managed to work out. Uh, he also saw some of the black and white um, uh, series uh, that were done at the beginning of 40s, The Adventures of Captain Marvel. And some of the first earliest toys of him started to appear in the 70s or thereabouts. Uh, I'm mostly familiar with the Mego version of it, Mego version of him. Um, after that, there is another version of him showing up in the Superpowers uh, toy line in the 80s that was made by Kenner. And then in the 90s, there was um, another version of him uh, done by um, Hasbro, I believe, around mid-90s. And then, of course, we come to the 2000s and the DC Direct start making several versions of Shazam. And some of them you will see here today. So moving along, I will show you some of the other characters from the same wave that this uh, Shazam figure came from. So the next in line would be Captain, Mar Captain Marvel Jr. This is a very good friend of Billy Batson and his name is uh, Freddie Freeman. He's, according to the uh, earliest known origin story, he's a newsboy who is crippled. And he was badly hurt by uh, an arch enemy of Shazam during the time of roughly World War II era, who badly hurt uh, Freddy and left him unconscious. But Captain Marvel managed to save him by bringing him to the Wizard Shazam. And Wizard Shazam is an elderly man who granted Billy Batson his powers. 
and he also granted same powers to Freddie Freeman in order to save his life and some of the others closest to Billy will gain such powers as well so when Freddie Freeman shouts the same word meaning Shazam he will transform into a uh, an slightly older version of himself and his costume is very similar to that of Shazam the only difference being is that he's wearing a blue and yellow costume instead of uh, red and his cape is actually red and yellow instead of yellow and white other than that uh, I understand and based on the newer comics of the DC Comics uh, New 52 series that started around 2011 onwards um, Captain Marvel Jr. slightly changed in appearance meaning instead of a black hair he has he has uh, long blonde hair but the name remained and his origin story was changed the other thing that remained with him is the fact that he's crippled in one of the legs and instead of being a newsboy in the newer comics he is actually a uh, a foster child in a foster home. He made a major appearance along with the Shazam family, the new version of Shazam family based on the new 52 series in the Shazam movie that came out a, f uh, a few years back. The other very important member of the Shazam family who also had changes to her origin story at least twice would be Mary Marvel or Mary Batson now originally speaking she is the long-lost twin sister of Billy Batson with whom he managed to reunite in the old stories and he granted some of his powers to her as well and she transformed into a more mature version of herself and calling herself Mary Marvel now this figure also comes from the same uh, from the same wave as the previous two and there were actually two versions of her released at that time so the red one in my right hand would be the uh, regular version and then the one in the left would be the variant because at different times she would uh, wear the variation of her costume and both of these figures of course came with the plastic stands uh, Mary Marvel also had an appearance in the uh, Shazam comics over the decades and her origin story was changed uh, in the uh, New 52 series so she was not a uh, long lost twin sister of Shazam anymore or actually of Billy Batson she ended up becoming just another foster child in the foster care home that was adopted by the same family that adopted uh, Billy Batson and uh, Freddie Freeman and several other children and that whole idea was represented in the Shazam movie where Mary is also one of the main characters. And then the last member of the Shazam family made by DC Direct would be Hoppy. That is his name. I had to do some research because I'm not quite familiar uh, with this bunny rabbit representing... Uh, 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 sort of a funny looking version of uh, Shazam uh, according to the oldest uh, origin story he's just uh, one of the animals who lives in an animal um, uh, town I believe it's a uh, part of a uh, sort of a sillier version of the Fawcett comics that was published uh, just around the same time as the first Shazam comics and in a way he reminds me with his personality um, this uh, an equivalent of Batmite and in the Batman Brave and the Bold Batmite uh, adores Batman and follows him around and tries to provoke him into new adventures and such uh, now Hopi I don't think he was a, a fanatical fan but he adored Captain Marvel and uh, viewed him as his uh, favorite hero and such and at one point he also tried to imitate uh, Shazam by saying the word Shazam and see if he would transform and interestingly and magically enough he did actually transform into a, a Captain Bunny the figure you see in front of you 
Now there is another origin story that was completely changed after the events of the Crisis of Infinite Earths that took place in the comic in the DC Comics in the 80s, in the mid 80s when many of the characters from DC Comics were retconned and some got killed in the major event against the Anti Monitor, uh, uh, a supreme being that was uh, uh, bound on bent on. Um, destroying uh, several uh, Earths that existed in the story. Uh, after that event, Hopi was completely depowered and his powers were completely taken away from him and he became just an ordinary bunny rabbit with no costume or anything like that. Uh, so later on his origin story was changed into uh, the fact that he was just a pet in one of the stores and it so happens that Mary and one of the other new members of the Shazam family were in that store and they were required, uh, I don't really know the story, but they were required to change into their alter egos and they did and during such transformations of becoming uh, uh, Mary Marvel and um, in getting infused with those powers, he was caught during that transformation and some of it reflected on him. So he was able to use that newly found power to open the roof of his cage and then just fly out the window. But again, uh, he wouldn't wear any costumes of any kind. So he looked rather like an ordinary bunny rabbit. There was nothing special about him, no costume or any such. So this uh, figure came packaged with Billy Batson, who unfortunately I don't have. Uh, this was just, uh, he just came by himself um, at, at the time when I got him. And um, he has even less articulation than the rest of the figures in the way because he's such a small looking figure. And one thing I would like to mention that his ears can be very brittle. As uh, many problems do exist in the DC Direct line over the years, and that would be mostly the quality control issue, that the legs or the arms or even the heads would easily break and such. But I think he's all right. The only worry would remain about the ears popping off, and hopefully not. He also comes uh, with a plastic stand, and Billy Batson would have come with the same one. That would be the only two pack that was released. The only other figure that was released in that in this same wave that I don't have would be one of the three main enemies of Shazam, being Doctor Sivana, a sinister-looking uh, elderly scientist who is always trying to uh, uh, defeat once and for all Shazam and his family. The other enemies of Shazam would include uh, Black Adam. Um, who originally hails from Egypt, ancient Egypt, and he was given powers of Shazam by the wizard Shazam, thinking that he's worthy of such powers. Unfortunately, Black Adam became corrupted by such powers and decided to use those powers not for good, but to take over the world. Now, the possibility is if there is a Shazam Part 2 movie, hopefully coming, there is a, there are stories circulating around that we will see Black Adam in that sequel. Well, in the first movie we saw Dr. Sivana, and at the very end we saw another known uh, villain of Shazam, and he's also made appearance in the cartoons uh, and uh, comics, and that would be an alien worm uh, who uses telepathy uh, to uh, defeat Shazam, and his name is... Uh, Mr. Mind. So, uh, moving along to s now to some of the other versions of Shazam that I have here. That would be this version right here that's based on the New 52 stories, but specifically based on the storyline of uh, Justice League The War. Uh, that would be the title of an animated first animated uh, movie that was based on the New 52 uh, comic book stories. And this is how Shazam looks like in that particular story. So he's pretty much more or less wearing the same classic costume, except the lightning is a bit shorter, but 
and it's a little bit different in look than the, the usual. But other than that, he still wears his iconic cape with an addition of Hood being present at this point. The older version of Shazam, uh, before the new 52, did not have any Hood, he just had a cape. It's a very nice looking figure and quite tall, I would say. And this figure came under the uh, changed name of DC Direct, which would be DC Collectibles, but it's still it was still the same company, just uh, with a brand new name. Now, after this one, we have this version of Shazam, based on the art of Ed McGuinness, and he hails from the story of Superman, Batman, Public Enemies, a uh, comic book story, and which was also made it into an animated movie. And I like this version quite so. The only problem is it's a bit worn out after being displayed for long, so there is a little bit of paint chipping on his cape, as you can tell here and there, which could probably be fixed if I apply some white paint to it. So these figures, especially Shazam, and several others that were made in, in this style, they all pretty much uh, share the same body type. And uh, they have the usual uh, amount of articulation in the elbows, the arms can go up and down, nothing in the waist, the head can turn left and right. And he also came with the plastic stand that is practically a combination of uh, Superman and Batman logos on top of each other. Now, in the uh, Superman Batman Public Enemies, uh, he was uh, sent by President Luthor to apprehend Superman and Batman who were accused of murdering Metallo, a uh, known supervillain and enemy of Superman. A lot, he was sent along with Hawkman to apprehend him. Now, there is a few more I would like to show you, and I'll start over here. This would be the Captain Marvel Shazam figure from DC Direct, based on the uh, Kingdom Come story, where the superheroes uh, end up in a civil war against each other, and the reason being of how would they handle villains and criminals, would they just apprehend them and put them in jail, or would they actually end their, end their lives permanently so they are not a threat anymore? Supposedly in that story, Shazam, who got somewhat mentally unhinged, decides to lead a group of heroes against uh, Superman and those who supported him in order to... Uh, put a stop to Superman's, uh, Superman's idea of uh, brutally punishing any of the villains who were caught doing any criminal activity. And that ends up in an epic showdown between him and Superman and numerous other heroes on both sides. So this figure has rather limited articulation, even more so than the regular DC Direct figures, due to the fact that it was mostly done for the sake of sculpt, so it's almost like a statue, even though the arms and legs can still move. But the focus was on the sculpt rather than the uh, articulation itself. But he still looks pretty good, and he has that classic look um, that's known in his, in, uh, in his uh, vintage comics. And as I mentioned, this would be ba this figure would be based on the art of Alex Ross. And then we have another figure based on Alex Ross art, which would be based on the Justice League stories done by Alex Ross, and that would be this particular Shazam, where he's appearing in his more classic outfit almost pretty much the same as the Kingdom Come one, except with the face a bit more serious looking, and he's much taller figure than the uh, other one over there, who also has a smile on his face. And 
the sculpting is just really well done, especially these uh, chevrons on the edge of his cape. And the uh, paint application on the belt and the cape and on the face, it all looks pretty good. He also came with the plastic stand, but that plastic stand was just an ordinary rectangular black piece with a bit of gray on the side, so there was no emblem on that uh, figure stand or anything. But the figure itself looks pretty good, and this is how he looks in the Alex Ross comics uh, from the Justice League uh, storylines. And then we're going to take a look at the last figure I have here for you today. And that will be the new 52 version of Shazam based on the new 52 comics. And he's wearing a hood. And you can sort of see the face. Uh, problem is I cannot remove the hood. It's sculpted right over his head. And then the lightning looks quite different because it looks like it has the lightning uh, still flashing in the middle of the symbol. One hand is open, the other one has uh, is sculpted in a fist form, and the cape looks quite bigger than with some of the other figures, because if you can, uh, if you can tell that the classic version of Shazam, his cape is somewhat a bit shorter, and it's mostly obvious on the Kingdom Come version, but in the New Fifty Two, the cape is much bigger, and the design is a bit different compared to the uh, older ones. There is also a version of Black Adam that came uh, based on New 52 um, that goes along with this figure, but more about the enemies of Shazam in another video. There is still a few Shazam figures I did not come across. Whoops, that was a, a bit of a mess up there. Uh, a couple of other figures that came along mostly from DC Direct, and there's about, I think, three of them. They're not that different. It's, it's obviously still Shazam, but in, belonging to different uh, waves and different sub-series of figures. So there is the first appearance Shazam that uh, was released also by DC Direct, and then there is also the uh, DC Collectibles Shazam based on the newer comics. It was packaged together with Black Adam. And then there is a boxed set of uh, Billy Batson and Shazam together in one box. And that particular box set dates back to the early days of DC Direct, so the uh, uh, end of 90s, early 2000s. So that would be all for now as far as Shazam and Shazam family goes. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will catch you guys next time with a video on the subject of Black Adam, the arch nemesis of Shazam. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.